Okay, I, I want to talk about a story that I saw in a bad left hook. By the way, shout out to badlifthook.com. So they have a story. It's titled, you know, Usyk is willing to fight Joshua in a rematch, okay, in England. So shout out to him. I mean, that, that that's to me, that's kind of crazy right there. You know what I mean? But ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we got the road warrior, <laughs> road warrior Alexander. Road warrior. Oh, sick. He looks sick. No, that, that's that, <laughs> that, that's a hundred percent, a hundred percent true, man. Let, let me tell you something about road warrior. Okay, Alexander. Oh, sick. That that deserves a like. You guys got to press the like button. Come on now, okay? Share the video, but check this out. Um, great, good stuff. Good article. But but here's my thing. A little bit of a criticism, but maybe it's not a criticism. I just wonder what you guys think. Should Usyk be a little more aggressive? He's a unified champion now. He's a former undisputed cruiserweight champion. He was a unified cruiserweight champion before, you know, when he was still fighting in, you know, he's a gold medalist, for God's sakes. This guy has earned every accolade available other than un the only thing left is undisputed at heavyweight. Yet here he is saying, yeah, yeah, I'll fight. I'll fight uh, Joshua, you know, in England. No problem. He might have said, look, I'm not going to get fat and out of shape like Andy Ruiz did. But, you know, there's one thing Andy Ruiz did do right. He played hardball and he made sure that that rematch was not going to be in the U.K. Ultimately, that didn't matter in the end. Right. But should Usyk be playing more hardball? Gee, Funky. What do you think? Should he be paying more hardball to try to get his home court or maybe somewhere like Vegas neutral, you know, or, or do you think this may be something he needs? Maybe he feels he needs to be the road warrior. How do you feel about it? Man, that's a good question. I think I'll say this. Um, I mean, we all know the politics of the sport. Sometimes being champion doesn't always make you a side, even though I think it should. Uh, but in this case, we know how big of a star Anthony Joshua is over there in, in, in the UK. So, you know, it's probably the best place for them to fight the rematch, make the most money, have the most fans there in attendance. Uh, I'm not really sure how big boxing is over in the Ukraine, <laughs> you know, no, um, as far as other sports go. So, you know, I, I think they're probably looking at it from that perspective. Um, but look, this guy, like you said already, he's, he's fought a lot of big fights in his biggest fights in his opponent's backyard. So he's very comfortable going on the road and getting a W. And I think that that's what he's going to do here again. I just think his style is all bad for Joshua. And uh, I love this picture right here, man. So I'm hoping when he does beat Joshua, we'll hear, oh, what a rush. <laughs> you stole it. I was going to do that. <laughs> right, right, right. Man, Sutter Kane, what do you think, man? you think it's all right just being the road war? you think he likes it? Or do you think he should be more aggressive, man, and – Maybe take some fights to the Ukraine or maybe Vegas, a neutral site. What do you think? Nah, man, I think he gets off at beating the shit out of people in their hometown. Like, he's the type of guy that will come to your hood and smack the shit out of you in front of everybody and then Damn. look at the crowd and say, what's next? Like, you get what I'm trying to say? I think he gets off on that, like, in my opinion. And because you look at all his fights, it's always at somebody else's home court. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So, I mean, he's been doing this forever. And I think he really just has no respect for joshua that much anymore like he knows what to expect so he just wants to get it out the way so he can go for undisputed you feel what i'm saying instead of just prolonging prolonging i mean he's, he's getting up there in age now so he's like you know what let's just get this out the way that's what it is as long as i'm getting my money we're here i'm gonna finish your boy out and then i'm on to either uh on the tyson fury you feel what i'm saying whoever i don't know if tyson fury is gonna fight somebody before then but whatever, whoever the winner of that situation is that's what he's aiming for is undisputed his it's not just these three belts like he wants to get that wbc so I think he just wants to get this shit out the way and everything. You feel what I'm saying? So if we're going to go with the Road Warrior thing, hands down, he's like a Road Warrior times 10 and stuff. And I was hoping people that he was going to beat Joshua. I said it and stuff that he was going to beat him. <laughs> Beeb was one of the people who was picking uh, Joshua heavy. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I remember hey, that. Hey, too, hey, Joe, talk to us, man. Do you think he should be more aggressive to try to stop being the guy on the road? Or do you think this is just what he likes to do? You know, he did mention that he would like to have the fight in the Ukraine, but now he seems to be more open to the UK. I would love for this fight to be in the Ukraine. I think he's more than earned the right to start calling the shots. I, to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, anybody in the chat, there is nothing in the contract that said that Joshua's side would pick where the rematch would be. In the Ruiz fight, there was a... a you know, a clause in the contract that stated that. So there is a beautiful 
stadium in the Ukraine. It's called the uh, Olympic National Sports Complex. It's beautiful. It, has, it holds 70,000 people. I would love to see the fight there. And to answer your question, yes, I think you should be more aggressive and have the fight in the Ukraine. No disrespect to Joshua. But the thing I don't like is I'm old school. You know, you, you lose the fight, right? You, you you start losing some of your your uh, your pull. I know he's a big name, whatever the case may be. That's fine, but at, at some point, you know, you know, you got to concede a little bit. I, I don't like the fact that everything ha the stars have to always be aligned right for him. Like Eddie Hearn said something to me that really was I found disturbing at the time. He goes, "Yeah, well, you know, uh, we know that Joshua can win in the UK." but we don't know if he can win in the U.S. So why not just have the fight in the U.K.? This was after the, 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 the Ruiz loss, right? But if you're champion of the world, you should be able to fight anywhere. I mean, Muhammad Ali fought fought every week, fought Jamaica, Africa, fought all over the place, right? Usyk's fighting all over the place too, right? In all, all, all different countries. So the fact that you're telling everyone this is the best heavyweight in the world, but then you're saying, well, we don't know. We're not sure if he can win in the U.S., so that's why we want the fight in the UK. And, and as you said, Ruiz played hardball and the fight was in Saudi, which is sort of kind of like Joshua's home away from home too, because, you know, he's pretty well known in the Middle East. He's vacations in the Middle East a lot. So that's almost like his home away from home. So I, I just get a little bit frustrated that this guy always has to ha always has to have everything in his favor lined up. You know, I, I understand this A-side like this A side stuff, but, you know, at some point it's got to stop. All right, Mario, uh, talk to us, brother. Well, what are your thoughts on Usyk, the Road Warrior? But, but do you think he should get more aggressive here? You know, I mean, he has all the accolades, and he's always been fighting on the road, and he's willing to do it again against Joshua. What, what, what do you make of it? Listen, I I echo a lot of the feelings that y'all have in terms of losing means something, winning means something, and calling shots it, it comes with that territory. But I'm going to look at it from a slightly different angle. <laughs> what we need or what Usyk needs rather is to become as popular as possible. They continue to, um, per, you know, compare him with the Klitschko's for obvious reasons. You know, they're both from essentially the same region of the world. And, um, you know, so like you look at their careers, let's look what happened. You know, Vladimir and Vitaly were not household names at first. They went where they needed to go so that they could beat the people in front of the most eyes possible. I do not think that Usyk is at a point yet where he can legitimately say that he has enough juice or all the juice he needs to, you know, run the course of his career and become the biggest possible heavyweight in the world ever. But if he continues to go on the road and beat Anthony Joshua in front of all his fans, you know, uh, in a beat in America, I'm beating an American on American soil. What that does is open up and broaden his audience. When the Klitschko's finally started their run and dominated, and then they were household names, at least within the sport of boxing worldwide, um, that's when you started to see them fighting in Germany and, you know, in places where they were calling the shot. But it was only after they got the notoriety to the highest level. Usyk is still in that position where he needs to we, – we know how good he is in the ring. Now he needs that commercial success. That's how you get it. Guys, All right. Hey, shout out to uh, Mario Figueroa, uh, best boxing show on YouTube. I appreciate it, brother. You guys are listening to the 53rd edition of the round table. Make sure you hit my like button just really quick. Um, look, I think he needs to start getting more aggressive because um, obviously they don't like, I get what you're saying, Mario, right. In terms of he needs to get as popular as possible. I think he would sell out that stadium in Ukraine that, that B was talking about. He's a former I'm gold sure medalist, uh, undisputed champion at Cruz, a unified heavyweight champion. There ain't, it's impossible. All he needs is one of the Klitschko brothers to say, this guy's a, the, the dude, and he's got it. Like, he will sell out a stadium in Germany. I am confident about it. But, but hey, he's willing to do it. I, I think he should be more you know aggressive. Amil Carr, we'll, we'll let you uh, give the final thoughts on this topic here. What do you think, brother? Well, first off, I want to congratulate, uh, well, not congratulate, but thank Mario for that comment. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm really happy that you're here with us tonight, Mario. And coming from you and coming from where you come from, that kind of a compliment honestly means a lot. You know, when I'm on your show, you know, oftentimes I feel like I'm MJF 
cut in the promo <laughs> uh, to, to the audience. You know what I mean? At least, at least that's the reaction I usually get. Yo. But, but uh, Yo. any anyhow, look. Let's go. Topic, topic, yes. Topic, yeah, back go ahead. To the topic. Uh, so look, I think that D Cell has a, made a very good point. Um, from a business perspective, there's no doubt that he should do what Andy Ruiz did. I think Andy Ruiz like upped his his purse by if not 50%, maybe even 100% by just holding out a little bit and making demands and essentially saying, look, you know, I can drop these titles and you can pick up the pieces if that's the kind of route you want to go or you can pay me more and I'll fight you uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, he owns three versions of the heavyweight title. That commands clout. Uh, but for whatever reason, Usyk, you know, call him a throwback, if you will, call him old school. But he essentially believes I got two fists. You got two fists. I'm much better than you are. And I'll give a fuck where we fight. I'm going to beat you. Uh, and I'm going to do it so decisively that they're not going to be able to rob me like they did Glenn Koff Johnson, who went from place to place as the road warrior uh, and got got boned time after time until he ba- pretty much KO'd Roy Jones Jr. in definitive fashion. And at that point, I mean, you couldn't really rob him of the victory. But, guys, there are not many championship-level fighters, dare I say any, that have done what this guy has done. Since fighting at the championship level, he's almost exclusively fought in the other person's home country. In fact, he has yet to fight in the Ukraine at the championship level. Don't believe me? Well, look at when he went to Poland, all right? He went to Poland, and he took on uh, uh, Glowacki, beat him in Poland, right? He went to Germany, beat Marco Hook in Germany. He went to Braid- He went to Bredis' uh, home city of Riga in Latvia, whooped his ass, went to Moscow and beat Gasayev, went to Manchester and beat Tony Bellew in the UK. All right, then stepped up to heavyweight, fought Witherspoon in the United States. Chisora in Chisora's home city of London in England. And then the biggest victory of his career was against Joshua, obviously in North London at the Tottenham Hotspurs Stadium, beating him. Guys, who else in boxing has done that exclusively a warrior man yeah exclusively fought literally in enemy soil exclusively time after time i can't think of another guy that's done it i I can think of people who fought on neutral territory you know i can think of people who've relocated to another country and fought out of that adopted country but to do this as a road warrior it's it's unprecedented and you got to give the dude his credit and at, at the end of the day, D style, I, I share your view on this, but it's that mentality that has led to a, I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna rematch this dude. You wanted a rematch clause? Great. I get two big ass paydays for beating you twice. Uh, that's kind of the attitude, you know. So I, I do respect it, but I also agree that he should be 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 making a little bit more demands. You know, call it prima donna or whatever. He's got, got to get a little bit of that in him. Uh, as a prize fighter. Yeah, I don't think he cares, to be honest with you, yo. I think it's more with him as the goal of getting undisputed. You get what I'm saying? Like, some fighters fight good at home. Some fighters fight great on the road. And some fighters fight great all around, like Beef said, around the world. You know what I'm saying? Around the world. But with Usyk, though, man, I think he really likes coming to your hometown and beating you in front of all your people. It's like some warrior shit, bro. Like some gladiator. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, he feeds off that energy, in my opinion. You're like, Usyk feeds off of it. You feel what I'm saying? So him going to back to the Ukraine, that's cool and all. But I think, like I said, man, he's on a goal. He's on a mission. I saw an interview a while ago where he said it's not even about this one belt or two belt, three belts. His thing is undisputed. He wants to get undisputed as a heavyweight. So I think he just wants to get this out the way and move on to the next one. But I think he doesn't – I think me, all of us are talking about he should get this and he get that. I think to him it's more of like, you know, I'm getting X amount, but this is my main goal. Make sure you catch the roundtable every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. 
Pacific on the ATP network rotation. Channels on the rotation are on the description below.